Over the last few weeks, months, I've realized that there's a few shortcomings with the design for the robot. And uh, it was just a prototype, so it kind of makes sense. But what I'd like to do is make it a little bit more stable. Um, so one of the issues that I did have was uh, one of the feet started coming off quite frequently because it's only really pinned through uh, to the actual servo itself. So what I would like to do is rebuild this with another version that is a little bit more sturdy and hopefully a little bit more configurable as well. So what I've tried to do is pull apart the original design for the head and rebuild it in a way that means that if I need to swap parts out, I can actually do that without too much effort. For those of you who aren't too familiar with the project, it is a small companion robot that runs with a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino connected by a serial uh, and also has uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, running on Python. Um, now what it has is it has a single eye, which is the uh, Raspberry Pi camera. It has an output, which is an LED that is used on the other eye, which is previously there. Uh, and then it also has motion sensor. It has power management. Um, and then we have the ability to run um, various AI algorithms which are now running on the Raspberry Pi and also on the Coral USB accelerator. Uh, and that's a fairly new addition, and it's also been part of the reason why I've decided to change the layout, because it didn't fit in the original head. It was bolted on the top. So what I'm trying to do is rebuild this in a modular format, which means that if I need to swap a piece out, I can do that without having to reprint the entire head. So what I've done is I've taken a load of small pieces, uh, like the eye, uh, I also have this, which is a cover for the eye, and it, eventually it will be um, mirrored, so you'll only see the light shining through. Uh, I have a camera, and I have a few other small things, like the microphones, the stereo lens microphones on there. Uh, and what I've done is, I've taken each one, and I've printed a small mount for it. And the mount itself is just big enough to fit the component inside, and it's push fit, so there shouldn't be any need to uh, glue it in place. And then what I've done is I've added a tab to the bottom. And the idea is that the tab will then fit into a corresponding slot in the actual frame itself. So I have that for this one, I have that for this one, and they actually stack together so they can go into the frame together. And then I have the camera, which does exactly the same thing. The frame itself mounts the Raspberry Pi via the mounting screws. Uh, then the slots for the LED and lens and then the camera on the other side there. I've also got a slot on the side for the power management board. That was actually new, because previously that was all within the body of the robot, but I've upgraded that, so I'm gonna put it as part of the head. Um, and then I also have space for a tab in order to put something over the back where the USB outputs are. So the way that this works is if I was to take the camera and put that in place, it slots in, and again, that is just push fit. Uh, there is room for the cable to come out, which we haven't got attached at the moment. Uh, and then I just push it into the tab. And again, it's quite a tight fit, but in theory, this should hold in place uh, while we assemble the rest. And then we'll be able to attach the Raspberry Pi. You can see with a little bit of work that we actually have the components mounted and they're not going anywhere. Uh, so I should be able to put everything in place without too much issue. If it got to the point that I was happy with these and they're in their final position and I wasn't planning on upgrading anything, I could add a little bit of glue or even a 3D printer pen to uh, melt those two sections together and make it more permanent. Uh, this as well, this is replaceable, so this pops out and pops back in again and it means that we can have uh, an upgrade if we need to change the layout for a new power board or anything else like that. One of the other changes that I've made here is allow the head to work independent of the body. So the idea is that the head will be able to hot swap with uh, other devices if I decide to do that. So rather than having the power and the serial connection going straight down and connecting into the body PCB, uh, I've actually split it out so that we have a uh, boost uh, buck converter in place uh, that can handle anywhere up to 30, 40 volts. Uh, and that outputs a steady 5.1 volts for the Raspberry Pi. And then the other cables here are the existing serial connections. And the way that I've wired this means that if, because there are six connectors and only four of them are active, 
uh, the power is on one side and then the other side is blank. Uh, it means that if we assemble the head and put it in the wrong way around, uh, it either won't fit or it won't do anything because the power will be connected uh, to these empty pins rather than being connected the wrong way around, which could obviously do some damage. So that's a little bit of an improvement. The only other thing that I've done as well is swapped out the tilt switch, which previously, if you turned your robot upside down, it would initiate the shutdown on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that actually turned out to be a bit of a problem because every time I was testing, if it moved too much, it would actually shut the Raspberry Pi down. So I've swapped that out for a manual push button switch. Because the connection can be removed, it means that I can take the head off any of the devices that I'm connecting it to, uh, swap them around, or even attach it to something like this, which is just a tripod mount, um, and then supply power or connect batteries or do anything like that that I might want to do. So it makes it quite flexible. It means that I can uh, run it via battery power, via mains power. Uh, what I have been using is one of these, which is a USB-C um, power delivery device and you can use the button to set the voltage that it receives uh, and this circuit will accept anything above 5 volts uh, and so did the original one as well so it means that I can run it with any kind of USB power source as long as it can supply more than 5 volts. And this is what that looks like in Fusion 360. So this is a slightly earlier version. In the end I actually had to reprint some of these because the pegs to hold the components in place weren't thick enough or the alignment wasn't quite right or something like that. And I've also since added a bottom piece to make sure that everything fits together and holds together quite tightly. So you can see I've imported the Raspberry Pi model just as a reference. Uh, and one of the things that I can do here is dry fit some of these test shells to see how they would fit around the actual skeleton of the frame of the project itself. So this is what all of this looks like once it's been printed. Uh, this is the top piece and all I'm doing here is adding some standoff screws. These are uh, three mil nylon and then once I've done that I can start to fit the Raspberry Pi board to it, assemble it all into one piece. So then I have the Coral USB accelerator added to the top uh, and again there are individual mounting points for that so if I need to adjust it or move it I can just move those mounting points and then I slide the cable in between the two layers with the standoff screws keeping things separate. That just means there's a bit of heat dissipation between the two devices because the Coral USB can get quite hot. And the plan is to keep that piece exposed to the air so it can dissipate the heat a little bit if it needs to. And then it's time to add the power board. So again, that piece slots into the tab on the side and then the power board just push fits uh, onto the mounts that are 3D printed. All of these pieces could actually be laser cut. Uh, it's designed to be as flat as possible. There may be a couple of elements you'd have to adjust like these pegs uh, or the screw thread for the tripod mount. One of the things that I noticed when I was assembling it was that my custom PCB gets in the way of the standoff screws that mount the Raspberry Pi to the 3D printed top and bottom pieces. So unfortunately what I've had to do is extend it a little bit and have it so the Raspberry Pi is mounted to the top and then on the side that causes the problem I've actually had to put separate standoff screws on a slightly different place uh, and actually adjust them with spacers to make them match. One of the other things I wanted to do was add some sort of mirror effect to the lens. So I've used some window foil that's designed to reflect the heat from windows uh, and it's adhesive on one side. And all I've done is cut a little bit of a square off that and then um, stuck it to the other side of the lens. Once that was in place, it was time to add the camera. Now, unfortunately, the camera cable uh, does need to be turned 180 degrees from, from what I originally thought, so it does have a little bit of a twist in it. Uh, but that should be able to go underneath the bottom piece to hold it out of the way and hopefully shouldn't cause any problems with the operation itself. And then it's time to add the bottom piece and you can see there's a separate slot for the power cable to connect to. Again, that's just push fit. It may need to be secured in place with a little bit of hot glue. You can see the hole for the tripod mount and then there is gap for the GPIO pins so that we can still connect things if we want to continue development without pulling this apart. Uh, and then the two pieces on the side are where you would slot the microphone mounts. 
and then a couple of uh, screws on the bottom and everything's assembled. And you can see there's still a gap along the back where I might want to have a separate piece to hold everything together, uh, especially that power button. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna test fit everything and we'll attach it to the tripod and see what it looks like. So that's all looking pretty good. It feels very sturdy. It's quite lightweight because it's mostly just plastic. Uh, if those screws turned out to be too lightweight, you could swap them out for brass standoff screws just as easily and they would fit in the existing holes. And the next thing for me to do would be to add a shell and give it all a good test. So that's potentially coming up in the next few weeks. Thanks for watching.